In the previous video, we started looking at information entropy. And in this, this time, we're going to continue looking at some basic properties of entropy. Uh, and uh, so I'm just going to continue this. We're going to have a long list of remarks here about this definition. Just recall, this was the definition of the entropy of the random variable, discrete random variable x. So number four, remark number four, this entropy, the entropy of x, can actually be written as an expected value. So I will write capital E for expected values. And it is the expected value under the distribution P that x follows of minus log P of capital X. This is the random quantity that we're taking the expectation with respect to. So remember, you know, as an aside, you will remember that the expected value, expected value of, you know, f of x for some random variable x uh, is just, you know, if x is discrete, it's the sum over all values, little elements, little x in the set that x, uh, you know, takes values in of f of x times p of x, where x is distributed according to p. So, you know, if you re remember the definition here, you can just, you know, match up these two formulas here. We're summing over, you know, f of x in this case is just minus log p of x. So there's something a little bit kind of strange about this formula. You know, we're taking the expected value with respect to p, and we're also using p inside the formula, but it's nothing too mysterious. You know, you could just think about, uh, you know, we have some function f, and well, f just happens to, uh, you know, use this function p. So just think of as p as a function here. Th this formula is sometimes very useful for working with entropies. Expectations are always nice. Okay, five. The next thing to note is that the entropy of x, it depends only on the distribution p, you know, where x is distributed according to p. And you can see this just from the formula, right? So the only place that, you know, the values that x actually, you know, these elements, the only place that they come into play is when they're evaluated at this function p. So the only thing that matters is the probability distribution. So for example, in our example, uh, you know, if we changed, as I sort of alluded to, it doesn't really matter what these values are. They could be, instead of 1, 2, 3, it could be 4, 5, 6, or it could be a, B, C, or 3, 2, 1, whatever. The main thing is that the probabilities, that's what affects the entropy. Okay, so 6. 5 will lead to 6. 6 is a bit of notation. Something, you know, this notation can kind of be confusing at first because it's actually ambiguous. Uh, Oftentimes it will be convenient to write h of p, this is define this to be h of x when x is distributed according to p. So, uh, you know, normally this might not well be well defined, but in fact it is because of property 5. Because of property 5, we can make this definition. And another very similar looking notation, which is very easily confused. So let me write out what this one, before we get to the next one, let me write what this actually looks like. H of P, if P, you know, remembering that, that it doesn't depend on, you know, the entropy doesn't depend on the quantities. We could just write this as some, as I did above in the example, some, you know, list of probabilities that sum to one. You know, 
they have to sum to one to be probabilities. And so, uh, you know, the entropy here, this, you know, these are all three equal, is summing over i from one to n. Or I mean, it could be, you know, it, it could be infinite, countably infinite. So n might not be finite, but just look at the, we'll look at the finite case for now. Pi log pi. And a very similar looking notation, draw a line to emphasize that this is different. Sometimes we write h of p to be the, the entropy of a random variable x that takes the value 0 or 1 with probability, so it takes the value 1 with probability p. It's a, ran, a Bernoulli random variable. So sometimes we write this to mean, so that would be minus p, I'll just write it and then explain what the heck this is. So this is the entropy of a random variable x when x is, uh, you know, takes the values 0 or 1 and uh, probability that x is 1 equals p. So p in this case is a, so, so this, this definition applies when p is a number. This is different. These are not the same. Here p is a distribution. Here p is a number. Of course, I wrote them exactly the same because that's uh, the notation that people use. It's ambiguous, but, uh, well, we just have to live with it. Okay, uh, now, you know, you can think of this, since this is just, a, you know, a number, this is a function that depends on this number p, this function uh, on the, the interval 0 to 1. So what are some properties of this function? In fact, it, you know, if we look at, maybe if we look at some basic properties in this very special case, then we can learn something more general, maybe, we can learn something more general about uh what p, I mean, what the entropy does. So the next remark or property is in this case, so in this case here, when x is Bernoulli, when it's a binary random variable, we have, uh, so I'll just write, if x is Bernoulli, p of x equals little p, then this function h of p, h of x, well h of x is just equal to h of little p, the p being this number, is concave, it's a concave function on its domain which is just 0 to 1. And it looks like the following. It looks like my bad drawing skills here. This is a zero, one and one half. This is one. Then this function h of p starts out here at zero. It jumps up, maxes out at a half, and then it comes back down oh, to one. And it's perfectly symmetrical about one half, regardless of my bad drawing skills. So this is useful to, you know, and the, the maximum value is one for this very special case. And this is a, a useful to keep this this uh, shape of the entropy in mind. Okay. Uh, another. You know, so I gave a little example before, a really important example. This is a, this is a super important example of another sort of special case, but a, in some sense a very common special case, is the uniform distribution. 
So what happens if uh, our probability distribution, if p of x equals 1 over n, and in this case our set is 1 through n, or any n numbers, or any n elements, it doesn't matter what the numbers. But the important thing here is that the distribution is uniform. It is the same on all the elements. And uh, so what is the entropy in this case? Well, the entropy of an x that follows this distribution is minus, I'll just write it out and see what happens. 1, well, p of x, remember. This is just the definition of the entropy. And this is minus, i goes from, well, there's n things in here, so we may as well just number them, 1 to n. Well, that's, those are the elements. 1 over n log 1 over n. And uh, minus log of 1 over n is just log of n. So let's just pull that out. Log of n sum from 1 to n of 1 over n is log of n. So that means the entropy, I'll use, start using our notation up there. H of p, you know, these are equal. p is the distribution here. Equals log n for a uniform distribution. N here is, of course, the size of the set. So this is a very important special case for you to keep in mind. It pops up a lot of times. And uh, in fact, in the uh, thermodynamic entropy, this is the, the case that you, you typically consider. So you may recognize entropy looking something like this.